Hey guys, this is video 12 and this video is about the pool stance. A lot of people have been writing to me asking me about the correct way to do it. So I thought I'll just make a video and talk a little bit about the guidelines. Let's call it that because the stance can be a very individual thing, but of course there are guidelines that you should look out for. So I will try and explain those to you, um, talk a little bit about the pros and cons, but don't forget, um, sometimes there is no right or wrong, you kind of need to find your own way. But yeah, I will try to show you what I think is a good way to start and uh, let's jump right into the topic and we will start with the legs and the feet position. When it comes to your legs um, and the position of the feet, it's all about stability, okay? You need to be balanced. You need to make sure you feel comfortable, okay? So I'm, I'm playing right-handed, so that means that my right leg is in the back and my left leg is in front. So the right leg is in line with the shot that I'm going to play. So I put the leg in line with the shot and then I take a step forward with my left leg. Um, since I am leaning towards the table, that automatically means that you will put a little bit of more weight on your left leg very often, okay? The guidelines also say that most of the time you should bend the front leg and then stretch uh, the leg, the back leg, okay? So, but this is, depends a little bit on the body structure, depends a little bit on the height of a person. So sometimes you see that, you know, players that are really tall, they bend both legs, which is fine as well. Um, just make sure you're balanced, okay? You're stable and that you lean towards the table a little bit more. So the next topic is the bridge hand, okay? So it's the hand in front of you and now you need to learn the dif uh, different types of bridges, okay? The first one is the standard one, the open bridge, the one that you uh, get to learn right away. And it's actually the one that you can use for almost every situation. The second is the close bridge, which is already a bit more difficult because at the beginning it could be that um, you can't get uh, through with your cue, okay? So this is really something that you need to practice a little bit and stretch your fingers in order to do it correctly. So this might take a while. The third important one to start with is the bridge uh, from the rail, okay? Because with these three bridges you are uh, set for a good start and then of course the other ones are varieties of these three bridges. Once you've found a good bridge hand, now the question is how far away should your hand be from the cue ball? And there are a lot of opinions out there, especially two, there are two sides out there. The ones that say uh, the closer the bridge is, um, it's less fragile and it's easier to stay straight. Um, and the other side that says, well, when your bridge is a little longer, that gives you opportunity to create more quality and give more effect into the cue ball. Um, but of course, it's more difficult to stay straight. Maybe the truth is in between. There are two extremes out there. You see both uh, sides out there, pros with a shorter bridge and pros with a long, long bridge. So. I think if you start now, maybe start with a solid bridge, you can always change it a little bit once you get to know your technique and your stroke a bit better. So maybe start with 20 centimeters, 25 centimeters. Um, so cue ball to the finger, the, the finger here, uh, 20 centimeters, 25. Start with that, try out uh, and see how it feels and then you can always um, go closer or go further away. Okay, but I think this is a good distance to start with. So the next important thing is your, let's call it stroke arm. Okay, so um, it's the arm that's responsible for a straight and good cue action. Okay, and this is what billiard is about. You need a straight and good solid cue action. Cue, the head, the shoulder and the elbow should be all in one line. So you, when you look um, from the front and look at the player from the front, uh, everything should be in line and the shoulder should be behind the head. So when you look at somebody from the front, you actually shouldn't see the shoulder, okay? 
But when you look at players, very often you actually see the shoulder um, poking out right next to the head a little bit. So what that means is they lie on their shoulder um, and then it comes out and then they try and correct it by just changing the elbow in the lower arm, okay? Uh, don't get me wrong, if you have that, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean you cannot have a straight cue action, okay? So it's not like if, if, you, if your uh, cue action is completely straight, um, but you have that with your shoulder, then leave it, because obviously it's working. Be careful if you want to change that. If you don't have that with your shoulder in line and everything, be careful with changing that, because never forget, when you change one um, ankle, everything else changes too, okay? So if you change your shoulder position, that means you will automatically change your elbow and your lower arm position. So you have to adjust that too. So when you do that, please always do that with a trainer. Next question, head position. Well, your head should be exactly over the cue, of course, as center as possible. Uh, very often you see that the cue is sometimes a bit more underneath at left eye or right eye or the right eye um, and that basically means that there are um, uh, I don't know the English word now <laughs> are aiming Jesus <laughs> aiming is the word that I was looking for so if the cue is not uh, in the center of your head and it's a little bit underneath the left or right eye that means you're aiming a bit more with that eye okay so and it's it's normal to aim a bit more with one eye than uh, with the other that's that's normal it's like you have a stronger arm and a stronger leg um, but be careful that it doesn't change over time so that one eye gets stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger and you move out with your cue because of course it's a perspective thing so if you are basically aiming with both eyes then you have a very good perspective if that changes and the cue goes out and out and out there will come a point where it might get a bit tough to see certain balls especially when it comes to thin cuts so now the question is how do you hold the cue and what is with the wrist what is what should the wrist look like so imagine you're holding or you're trying to hold a baby bird okay you want to you may want to make sure uh, the bird doesn't fly away, but you also don't want to squeeze it too hard and hurt it. So that's how you hold the cue. So you're, you grab the cue with all of your uh, fingers. You surround it, you surround the cue like this, but you don't hold it too tight. So you don't tense up your muscles and therefore block um, your wrist. So now about the wrist, and then I again have a, a good example. Imagine you are going home from a supermarket and you are holding a bag in your right hand okay like a plastic bag and you hold it and you walk home how would you hold this bag what would your wrist look like i think it's very often would be just hanging down straight naturally and you wouldn't bend your wrist in any kind of direction and this is how you're holding a cue straight down let it hang loose And last but not least, a very uh, important uh, part, I think, is how you approach the table, how you walk uh, into the shot. Um, now, some players might think, well, you go down. Well, yeah, <laughs> I believe that aiming already starts before you go down in the shot. It starts with the position of your feet. And let me explain that. I, for example, look at my right foot as an anchor foot, okay? so. I look at the ball, I look at the line that I want to play, and I put my right foot in line with the shot already. So I'm already aiming with my right foot, and then I take a step forward with my left one, okay? And then the right one does not move anymore. Um, there's another way to do it. It's like you take a step back and then look at the line and then make the step first with the right leg, put it in line, and then the left leg, okay? That you see also very often. Um, I think it's important. I think it's a, it's important that you have a consistent approach.
All right, everybody, um, it's a wrap. Video 12 is done. I hope uh, I could help you a little bit with stains and the guidelines and what to look out for. Um, well, of course, comment if you have any questions and uh, until the next video, guys, uh, stay tuned, be safe, and I talk to you soon.